ericmother.com. Let's take a look at the stocks that you had provided me to do a portfolio review. Stocks that you had owned in the past so we can see where we can start with the one-on-one -on -one mentorship. And so stocks there are the ones you own. I see the buy point of the time period is about late 2010, 2013 actually. So 2013 for the most part. And also there's one that you had mentioned on, in a telephone conversation that I, I just added there. But so these are the stocks we're gonna discuss. And the one thing I'm gonna say is I took a quick look and strangely enough, the first two stocks don't trade anymore. So these two stocks are no longer trading, or at least not under that ticker symbols. And I, I suspect, I'm not sure, I think this stock here, this BALT, I think this stock probably did drop significantly off this level here and was probably trading in the single digits. Maybe it went under, I'm not sure, and I'm not sure about this one, but it's not pulling up when I check this chart. So we're gonna be taking a look, quick portfolio review, or at least review of the charts when this uh, were in your portfolio. And you can see that on these three instances, that we're gonna discuss, all of them were profitable for you. So we're gonna take a look at how the charts did present that opportunity and why they turned into some type of a profitable position based on the chart setup. All right, let's take a look at the first one here. And it is for DAC. And one thing I do note here is, by the way, I'm just for the sake of being able to capture the some of the stuff I wanna talk about, mainly we are looking at a five year weekly or monthly actually five year monthly on this chart so five years of data and the reason why it's five years is because i want to be able to capture go back about three years which gives us the ultimate more the breakout so that's why I'm, I'm adding five years from this date so we can capture what this charts look like um, at the time when you are buying them so just take a look at dacn and we can see clearly here the first thing I do note now is that on hindsight, this was not a very good stock pick. And the reason I say that is because of this type of ugly chart. It has what I call an ugly looking chart. It's all over the place. You can even see when on the way up, it was not smooth and, and it still continues doing the same thing. In other words, it has a history of doing this. And so now that I look at this, even though it went on to uh, give you some small gain or some decent gain on hindsight i would not have considered this a buy just because of the nature of the way the chart looks in other words take a look at this monthly view it's the stock is all over the place so by the time you are buying it during the breakout here you can anticipate this type of action which is exactly what has taken place over the last two years needless to say the thing that is exciting is so I'm assuming that your buy point here, which was in, let's take a look at when that period was. And so your buy point was sometime in um, December 26th to January 28th of the following year. So to the late 2013 to early 2014. And what we have here is, so we're talking about this period. So late 2000, so somewhere around here and out, actually that was January. So we're talking about this move here in December, which is a nice entry by the way, I have to say, and getting out late in January. So that was a good trade. So we're talking about getting out somewhere there would be my guess, because I don't see the price entry. But still, I think the key here is the stock met the minimum requirement, and that's absolutely key. Let's not forget that there was a breakout here in the RSI. RSI was giving us a move to three year highs. So we are not surprised that it went to do well. We see that the price entry was here and maybe that's something we can work on on the while we do the coaching here. And I like this because it was a nice entry above the, the recent or the previous recent monthly closing highs. And of course we see that the stock went on a nice run. So it goes to show that when we are looking for ideas to buy, we should always make sure that they meet this minimum requirement because we're gonna see it in all these three examples that we're discussing. And again, what we see here is 
we had already seen evidence. Now we can say that there was evidence that this was a volatile looking, ugly looking chart. And even though there was success and you actually were lucky because you owned it at the exact time it was consistent, which is this one two month period. In fact, other than this two month gain, the stock hasn't moved that kind of magnitude since then. And you can see since then it's been up and down, very volatile, ugly looking chart. So the entry there based on the RSI looked good. The one thing we should also take note is you can see here the monthly chart was rejected twice. So twice double top uniform activity rejection at 69.1. And so we look at things like this down the road. So we can see that that comes into play whenever you see rejection at 69.1. It's telling you something is taking place. And obviously that was a sell signal since then. The stock hasn't been back to those levels. We can also see that if we take a look also at the MACDs at the time of buying the stock. So at this time period here, and this is three years worth of data at the time here you can see that that period cor corresponds with the main MACD moving to fresh three-year highs, which is great. So we need one of the MACDs doing that, and we can see here one of the MACDs met the minimum requirement, which is why the stock went on a nice run. And even though it wasn't the best looking stock, it still gave you a return, which is what we are looking for. Ult ultimately, what we are looking for is some type of a return, irrespective of um, the chart, you can see it was profitable. So this one, I mean, I think that's a good um, just starting point. Yes, we can see that it broke out and did well. And so let's take a look at the next one here. And here I'm just going to consider the monthly charts. Otherwise, the video can be too lengthy. We just want to look for some starting point. So again, five years worth of data, five years monthly for Morgan Stanley. And your entry, if I, let me check here, was sometime in the middle of October and an exit early in 2000 so from mid october 2013 to let's call it about early part of 2014 january let's take a look at the charts there and so we're talking about entry somewhere here let's see somewhere around there in october and an exit somewhere here in um in january and we can see that that made sense in my opinion because right there and I do suspect this were my picks if I'm not wrong and I think that's that should be I think this was from my own um, research this was already making a move to three year highs hence the interest and I suspect at the time it was breaking out and we were we had an interest in it because it was moving above the previous monthly closing highs going back to 2011 so there was a breakout here multi-year breakout we got you our RSI on the monthly moving to fresh three-year highs. So there is our RSI moving to fresh three-year highs requirement. And, and I'm pretty sure the MACDs were also at, at, at highs. So you can see at the time, so we're talking about this period here in mid-October. Uh, something maybe a little bit. Hold on, let me draw this right. So mid-October would be somewhere there, this time period. And we can see that that corresponded nicely with the RSI to MACD moving to three-year highs. And the main MACD was already at three-year highs and also, more importantly, was showing momentum by moving above zero. So the minimum requirements on the, on the MACD was also met. So you got your RSI and the MACDs giving us the minimum requirement. And this is on a three-year time scale, on a monthly. And hence, the stock did well. In fact, you can see that since the breakout, if you take the monthly closing high, since this monthly closing high, the stock has not closed on a monthly closing basis. The stock has not closed below that line. And so we can say that this was a successful trade. Now, the one thing I can see here, you got out in January here, which is about three months later, maybe less than three months later. And that's okay. But what we see, and it's, it's, it, I think it's something that the modern day investor or trader does not avail themselves to which is holding on to stocks for many months because you can see that yes eventually it does pull back significantly but what i'm getting at here is there's a there's a tendency in this generation to 
in, in a, when I say generation, I mean in this generation of traders, holding on to stocks for days and weeks is becoming really rare. Uh, more than likely what you're going to find is people are willing to trade stocks in seconds and minutes and hours. And so one thing I would like to us to work on is just availing yourself to an opportunity. As long as you're not upside down, you're not losing money and you're not down significantly, I think you can hold on some of these opportunities because they could have a, a major upside. And by say opportunity, I say, let's say you had a hundred shares and you feel you want to get out for whatever reason, you can always sell 60 shares and keep 40. You know, so we don't have to always make the blanket trades, bulk, bulk trade in and bulk trade out. We can also portion in and portion out as a way to take, you know, um, to take care of some of the mental, I guess, mental urges that we've, we are definitely going to feel. I mean, market will force your hand into making a trade and so if you feel you need to do something, you can always do a partial trade as opposed to uh, always selling and buying things in bulk. Like there's no, you don't have to buy one bulk order for, you know, to fill a position. You can always go in with bits and pieces and eventually get out also in bits and pieces as the market avails itself and as uh, conditions change. Anyway, needless to say, that was a profitable trade and the key here is it met the ultimate more the breakout and the last one here is one that did fantastic and you're the one who reminded me of this and again here let's take a look I believe your entry was somewhere here when I recommended this in sometime in 2013 so I, I suspect this was during this breakout here so that breakout in price Let's call it at under just above ten dollars, somewhere in that range, twelve, eleven dollars, somewhere in that range. And once it broke out, you can see the stock went on a massive run, uh, jumping from lower double digits all the way to as high as ninety-five in about nine months, maybe something like that. And that, and again, what I'm trying to say here is, I see a need for traders and all of us to just not have to trade in bulk so if you had a hundred shares at this purchase here on hindsight it would have made sense to sell 20 shares and then another 30 shares and another maybe whatever was left and you keep selling as the stock is rising yes there was no way to know that the stock was going to move from from twelve dollars to a hundred I'm not saying that you could have played this perfectly but even if you sold it and you had three shares left by the time you're selling it in the 70s that's okay and so you can see this perfect example here does tell us and and confirm what I'm trying to say is that there's no reason to always have to trade in bulk before I go into that let's just take a look at the quality of the breakout the quality of the breakout here is absolutely great you're moving to all-time highs and a stock moving to all-time highs on the RSI is more powerful so all-time high move is more powerful like as compared to a stock moving to three-year highs so just keep that in mind the power of all-time highs is more is more critical than three-year highs yes we want a stock to be at a minimum at three-year high but given a choice between two stocks one making the RSI move and MACD move to three-year highs versus one making RSI and MACD moves to all-time highs you always want to take the all-time high move because the stock is at its strongest and there's a chance for the strongest move it has ever recorded and so we can see here the RSI jumping to all-time highs which is what we are, we are seek we are seeking ultimately if you are to reduce what you're looking for is stocks moving to all-time highs on the RSI on the monthly and also on the MACDs so this one met the minimum requirement and also we absolutely have to touch on the fact that in an area where people mostly would be scared to hold a stock that is trading above 69.1 so 69.1 is what people traditionally call above 70 and I think whoever came up with this number 70 was actually somehow trying to figure out what the number is but it's 69.1 and I'll explain how we get to that number at some point so 69.1 
but instead of running away from stocks trading above 69.1 we, we see evidence here that you're better off understanding that that is where stocks are powerful and this is a good illustration so in hindsight I believe you sold somewhere during this checkout and, and, and I suspect it was this checker it made a high of $40 and at some point during the month there it was trading back below to 27 28 it was a big drop or somewhere here either one of these shakedowns or this one here but also we see that there's a need once you get out of a stock as an ideal situation you can see that it eventually breaks out above the monthly closing high of, a, of February of 2014 and so it gave you another opportunity to re-enter the stock so we see here another illustration of a reason why we should not necessarily throw away or why we should not a sell everything sell and forget about it we can sell and still monitor the stock for a future breakout as this one turned out to be successful breaking out from forty dollars and all, and in a short time going all the way to 95 in about three months so we don't have to sell everything because had you kept some shares, maybe 10 shares, 20 shares, whatever percentage of your of your portfolio was in the in the position, you still had a chance of being part of the next breakout. And so I think it's a good starting point here. Um, let me know what sticks out, or if you want me to go to the next couple of topics uh, as we figure out which where we're going to be spending most of our initial time as we begin the mentorship otherwise um, let me know and if not um, if you don't have any major questions because I, I, I believe you're not unfamiliar with some of these things we're talking then I'll proceed to choose the next topic and we can move from there Eric Mwadid, Mwadid .com. enjoy your weekend oh, not weekend actually it is enjoy your evening or the morning depending on whatever whatever time I get to send this or you get to receive this video talk to you keep me posted ask as many questions as you find um, necessary to help you explain some of the things that we are discussing here. Talk to you later. All right, I am out. Woo!